My lab has been interested in study the function and the dysfunction of ARK2. So we chose to use um, genetic approaches to study ARK2 function and dysfunction in mice um, through the generation of knockout mice and knocking mice. Because ARK2 is a huge gene with 51 exons and uh, 144 KB, so, and also there are many alternative spliced products uh, naturally present. So we were unsure what part of the exons to target. Although we usually target an upstream exon that will create out of frame mutation. But here, and uh, we were concerned about the reinitiation from a downstream putative promoter region and a large truncated protein might be produced. So we decided to make two independent knockouts by targeting uh, either the promoter region plus exon 1 or exon 29 and 30 because that's the exons encoding part of the GTPS domain and uh, we all know GTPS. Um, domain is important for ARK2 function. So as for the knock-in, and uh, obviously we can make uh, many independent lines of knock-in because so many mutations have been identified. However, one amino acid residue, the R1441, caught our attention because um, three distinct mutations have been identified in this amino acid residue, highlighting the importance of this residue in PD pathogenesis. So through the analysis of uh, R1441C knocking mice at different ages, we discovered that actually the R1440C mutation does not cause dopaminergic uh, neurodegeneration. Uh, we did not find any loss of dopaminergic neurons. And in the knocking mice up to two years of age, we also uh, did not f see any reduction of strider dopamine levels in the knocking mice as well. And however, these knocking mice exhibit uh, a number of dopaminergic functional deficits. For example, dopamine release, dopamine neurotransmission are uh, impaired in these mice. And this slide shows a summary of the results from our group and other groups. And the experimental data as follows, and uh, one is that the knocking mice um, show normal open field activity under uh, basal conditions. However, uh, if we administer amphetamine, which increases dopamine release, and uh, that normally in wild-type mice will induce open field activity, and uh, in the knocking mice, those increases and in open field activity induced by amphetamine treatment is gone. And uh, we see similar level of open field activity in knocking mice versus control mice after amphetamine treatment, suggesting that dopamine release might be impaired in these mice. Furthermore, in collaboration with Emmanuel Pathos Lab at Tufts, they performed a parametric recording of chromophon cells to measure catecholamine release, which is thought to share the same release mechanism as dopamine release from nigrostrato neurons. And we found that, indeed, catecholamine total release is reduced in primary chromophon cells isolated from knocking mice. So uh, these two pieces of data together indicating that dopamine release is impaired in these mice. And uh, these results are actually interesting because previously, the last decade, our lab have developed a number of MOS models for recessive PD genes such as parking DJ1 and the pink one. Each of these individual knockout mice exhibit dopamine release defects and in the dorsal striatum and also the synaptic um, plasticity in median spiny neurons are also impaired. So this shows a convergence of PD gene mutations on dopamine release, and other groups ha who have developed different lines of 
ARK2 uh, mutant mice and listed here CJ Lee's group from Cornell and also Zheng Yu's group from Mount Sinai and Mefera's group from Mayo. And although they developed transgenic mice, either back transgenic or regular transgenic, overexpressing either R1441G or G2019S mutations, all of them uh, seem to share this dopamine release defects, although different groups use a different methodology to identify this phenotype. So we like to propose that perhaps there is a convergence of PD mutations and uh, on dopamine neurotransmission defect, and uh, that might be important for the uh, subsequent dopaminergic degeneration in PD pathogenesis. We uh, subsequently analyzed both independent lines of ARK2 knockout, and uh, ARK2 knockout actually did not show any phenotypes in the brain. And whether it's functional or morphological, we did not detect any loss of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra. And uh, there is no reduction of stridal dopamine levels as well. However, the kidney of the ARK2 knockout exhibits striking phenotypes and share many of the similar age-dependent PD-like cellular changes, such as increases in apoptotic cell death and also increased inflammatory responses as well as oxidative damage. In the first paper we published in PNAS uh, 2010, and uh, we focused on the analysis of really young mice and like one month old ARK2 knockout mice and 20 months old um, knockout mice and comparing the phenotypes. At 20 months of age, the kidney shows uh, different color, texture, the size is smaller. And uh, once we look at the morphology and it shows autofluorescence, and uh, so molecularly, we saw huge accumulation of alpha synuclein in both Triton X 100 soluble fractions and also significant increase of the insoluble fractions of alpha synuclein and the immunostaining also showed um, a lot of accumulation and uh, of alpha synuclein in the cell body. We also examined autophagy function and uh, found that autophagy markers such as LC3 conversion, LC3 1 to 2 conversion, and is impaired in these mice, and the autophagy substrate P62 is increased, and the both are indicative of impaired autophagy function, and the UPS pathway is also impaired in these mice. So this slide summarizes this data, indicating that in the absence of ARK2, and the plus another factor of aging, knockout kidney develops a striking accumulation of another PD protein, alpha-synuclein, although I'm sure alpha-synuclein is not only protein that accumulate uh, in the absence of ARK2, but it's interesting that and the protein uh, not only accumulate and also aggregate in the absence of ARK2 in the kidney and uh, during aging and uh, accompanied by a number of other PD like cellular changes. Because of this dramatic phenotype in the kidney, and we thought we should look into the development, the time course of the development of these PD-like changes. So we did a subsequently a more detailed time course analysis from mice at the age of one month, four months, seven months, and 11, 12 months, up to 20 months to dissect out what are the detailed changes. And uh, what we discovered was something really interesting is that loss of ARK2 actually leads to a biphasic um, alterations of autophagic activities and uh, in ARK2 kidney. 
at one month of age, we already saw some um, changes. For example, the kidney weight um, was actually reduced at a one month, four months, and seven months. And uh, by 20 months, weight is reduced. Furthermore, when we were looking at autophagy function, by looking at LC3-1-2 conversion, GAY16-1-2 conversion, and both of them, we saw reduced conversion, and also we saw increased LC3-1-2 conversion, as well as GAY16-1-2 conversion, indicating that aut- autophagy activities increased at those younger ages, at four or seven months of age, compared to 20 months of age. Autophagy substrate P62 is the the level of P62 is also reduced, indicating that uh, autophagy activity is increased. So these results are really the opposite of the 20 months mice showed reduced autophagy activity. We're also looking at uh, lysosomal markers such as LAMP1 as well as uh, lysosomal protease activities. And uh, we found that and uh, throughout different ages from one month to 20 months and uh, all of the lysosomal activities is increased. As for um, oxidative damage and uh, inflammatory markers, and uh, they will uh, sort of go along with the autophagy activity. Initially, we show an increase of autophagy activity and then reduced autophagy activity later in life at 20 months of age. So in summary, we found during aging process and uh, loss of ARK2 initially uh, results in increased autophagy activity. And by EM, we saw more autophagosomes and as well as autophagic vacuoles by EM indicating that protein degradation is increased. And that's consistent with we saw a uh, reduced level of alpha synuclein at four and seven months of age. And uh, um, then by EM, at seven months of age, we saw larger uh, autolysosomes and uh, indicating that there are more um, uh, autosome autolysosome accumulation, and that perhaps lead to impairment of lysosomal regeneration without lysosomes regenerated from these autolysosomes and the overall autophagy activity is reduced as the mice get even older, and then there is lipofusing accumulation leading to protein accumulation and aggregation. So in summary, What we found is that the ARK2 mutant form impairs um, dopamine release and uh, also D2 receptor function. And inactivation of ARK2 has a very specific effect in the kidney, leading to cell death, impairment of protein degradation pathways, and also inflammatory responses, and all in an age-dependent manner. Our interpretation for the kidney specificity of the phenotype shown in ARK2 knockout is that kidney normally um, expresses the highest level of ARK2 in all organs examined. Normally, ARK2 levels in the kidney is about six times as high as ARK2 level in the brain. That probably is consistent with this very important role of ARK2 in um, protein degradation and the maintenance of protein homeostasis because uh, kidney probably normally uh, has to carry out more protein turnover function. So therefore, a compromise and caused by loss of ARK2 leading to a more striking phenotype in the kidney than in the brain.